In order to succeed at having students be effective advocates, they have to develop speaking skills that go beyond just typical normal conversation. That ranges from everything from doing persuasive things with their eye contact, with their vocal variety, uh, their ability to enunciate so people can understand them, as well as to use inflection in their voice in a way that sends a powerful message. The question of how you do drills it only plays out as a matter of training. What we are trying to do is train muscle memory. And so sometimes we might, well, we should generally speak more quickly in our drills than we are going to speak in a debate. The idea is to exceed what the normal human response would be. If you think of it like, as I tell my students, it's sort of like an athlete that is being trained to lift 500 pounds or 400 pounds or 300 pounds as a football player, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to be having to use that much strength in a football game. Those are two different things, but having the ability to do that allows you to control and pay what you do so it's not a matter of learning to speak quickly for the sole purposes of speaking quickly it's not a matter of learning to over articulate so that you over articulate when you debate the idea is to make your mind in tune with your muscles and so that you use them well when you choose to use them a, f a basketball player will shoot a hundred shots from the same exact spot trying to replicate the same form over and over again you know you don't do that in a basketball game and in a debate you will not do the drill the same way in which you execute it as a drill there's a difference between drill and performance, and the drill is designed to enhance performance, not be performance. The biggest advantage that comes from, from doing reading drills is the confidence that students feel and the familiarity with the evidence that they're, that they're reading, and that's, that's good for everyone. There are several. Uh, one is uh, called the uh, wide open frog or the open mouth frog. Uh, I used to call it an over exaggeration drill where you basically are trying to force your mouth to be open. You're learning to use the muscles around your lips because most of us don't even think about those as muscles and uh, learning how to over exaggerate your words so that when you are speaking you will enunciate them clearly so it essentially improves enunciation. Other enunciation drills that you could use are uh, any sort of tongue twisters that allow the students to simply speak at a faster rate of speed on a tongue twister. It will lead to the students usually laughing, etc. but if they find that they can't pronounce certain sounds, certain ones are more difficult for them. They slow down when they do certain types of sounds or those sounds are not clear. Finding tongue twisters that focus on those particular letters or sounds can can really uh, just practice will make perfect and the students will be able to get better at it. The one that I was forced to do most often was to read with a pen in my mouth. Um, and if you are clear with a pen in your mouth, then you're absolutely clear without a pen. The pen drill, the idea is to get the students to keep their tongues out of their way. Some of us speak rather lazily. We were never really pushed to do something differently. And by, by having a pen between our, between our teeth, we hold our tongue in place so that it doesn't impede the flow of air from your larynx out through your mouth and that makes it easier to do that. And then of course reading backwards I think is a really good exercise just because it uh, you, you kind of learn that the words won't make any sense so you stop trying to read for comprehension and you just do it for speed and once you master that I think you can do the same thing reading from right to left. You need to work with them on their reading. You need to view that as a separate task at a certain level uh, where you can teach students who need to learn how to read better how to slow down and articulate words that are giving them trouble. Teach them what those words mean in the process and then you're serving two purposes at the same time. But you should view debate as an opportunity to enhance and improve their vocabulary and to help them read better. And if you break words down, you spell them phonetically, you pronounce them for them, and have them do some pronunciation drills, just pronouncing words that are difficult uh, in sort of a repetitive fashion for a little bit, that's another way you can set up a game. Can you say the word proliferation 10 times fast? Okay, now can you say it 10 times even faster? Can you condense that and do that same word 15 times in the same amount of time? Sort of, again, turning it into a game. But you do that over a period of time as you build up their confidence. You don't just throw them into the water. It's, you know, it's not like swimming. <laughs> you don't want to risk drowning them in their words. 
If you have students that are behind grade level in reading, some of the speaking drills can be embarrassing to the student. If you're using uh, uh, whatever they're going to be reading in the speaking drill is something that's not been pre-screened to make sure it's at their level. The first introduction to speed drills is done as a large group. So it's easy for those students to blend in with everyone else. And you, you'd be surprised, but they usually, I mean, from what I can tell, students try as hard as they can in those large groups. The second thing that we do is uh, after introducing speed drills is we'll do a speed competition where students who feel like they can read really quickly will come and participate in the, in the competition. Um, and that gives us an opportunity to sort of, uh, first off, determine who has reading difficulties uh, for the people who don't participate. You try to work with them quietly, privately, in a way that doesn't necessarily draw attention to the fact they're having reading trouble. So many people are embarrassed by having reading trouble, which is a far more common problem than they even realize. And so being able to, to put them in a situation where they don't feel threatened is the best thing to do. In order to make the speaking drills fun for students who may not be having a good time, we like to add an element of competition and also just kind of an element of silliness. So sometimes we do a tongue twister relay drill. Um, so we give each kid a list of tongue twisters and we put them side by side against the other people that are in their lab environment and we have them do a race to see which line or which team can com complete the list of tongue twisters the fastest. And so. The competitive aspect, I think, really gets the kids interested and really motivates them. And you can find that that transfers into reading the actual debate evidence later. Sometimes some of them enjoy reading fast. It's sort of a challenge to them. And you create sort of a competitive game where you have two students compete to read the same exact material at the same rate. That's a way of create, making it a game and more fun for them. So you can use some of them in a gaming way. And finally, sort of selling them on the idea of what they are trying to do. And sometimes what I just articulated about comparing it to athletics is very, very comparable. That if you are trying to train an athlete, it starts to make sense. And you are trying to train your muscles to use them a different way than you're used to using them. Become aware of their existence because we don't think about our mouths as muscles. Uh, then we start, uh, they start understanding why. And, and that's a big part, is convincing them why. But having, trying to make it as fun as possible is the most important thing for this age. I think that coaches should absolutely do the speaking drills with their students. Um, I think there are a few benefits to that. First, I think it motivates the students to do it because you're doing it. Um, and you kind of get to suffer with them. Speaking drills are a bit hard and they're tiring. So I think they like the fact that, that you're doing it as well.